if I came in here and said the only thing we're going to talk about is Duke. So, uh, you know, I'll just probably just go ahead and open it up to any questions. I guess your, your reaction to the announcement today? You know, it's um, disappointing uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, Logan Bowman, who's our video coordinator, uh, was really, really shaken up over this because he was a part of that team. And when you're sitting next to somebody when this comes out and you see how devastating it is for them and me being a former player, you know the hard work that countless players put into practice, individuals, games, all the quote unquote grind of a college basketball season and you know it, it's it's tough in that regard you know I, I, I sent a lot of these former players Luke Hancock Gorgi a lot of guys text messages that said this doesn't change what you guys did I said you guys won 16 games in a row you guys went 35 and 5 and you guys cut down the nets in Atlanta it doesn't change that I said you don't need a banner to tell you that you're a national champion and in my view they will always be one here and it's it's disappointing Obviously for them, because they're the ones that accomplish something that not too many people ever accomplish in sports. And it's disappointing for the coaches that put in a lot of the hard work to, to obviously make that happen as well. Um, it's disappointing for Coach Patino. It is because that team was probably the greatest joy of his life was coaching that team. And it's, it's I can't even imagine how he's feeling right now. Um, it's disappointing for the team we had two years ago that didn't get to play in the postseason tournament for something that they had absolutely nothing to do with. It's disappointing for the team I have right now that they have to go through all this all over again with something that none of them were even here for. And it's, you know, I don't want to go on a tangent about the NCAA, but the, the least they could have done is wait another month or so until our season's over. Because with what these players on my team have been through this year for them to have to go through another thing like this, it's not fair to them. It, it's completely not fair. It's, look, it, reality is what it is, I get that, but these 14 players have been through enough in the last four or five months that it, this is going to be a distraction for them, and I hope because they're great kids and tough kids mentally that they can get through this, and I know they will, but it, it's it's unavoidable, and I called them in at noon today, and I told them uh, right after we found out what was going to happen and what was happening because I wanted them to hear from me. I don't want them hearing through social media, and you know, it's maybe it's a good thing we're going out of town for a couple of days and we can just stay close as a group and, and just focus on what we need to do, and that's trying to win basketball games. David, for some of these players, this has kind of been their college career. I mean, just like something keeps happening every single year. So have they expressed frustration? Have they expressed any kind of emotion of that caliber? Well, Honest was nervous when uh, we when he got the text about the meeting because two years ago he remembers the same thing, finding out we're not going to play in the postseason. And obviously that wasn't a concern. I mean, you know, you know in, I think he was relieved. But, it, you know, next week we can talk about it more. But losing these two seniors – is going to be very difficult because they've gone through a lot of stuff that they didn't have anything to do with. And they they deserve to be, and all of our players on our team deserve to be, uh, they deserve a lot of admiration for the way they've handled a very tough basketball season. We haven't had a lot of time to focus on just playing basketball. There's been a lot of distractions. And it's not fair to them because they're 19, 20, 21 year old kids that are playing something that they love to do. But with that being said, I mean, it's reality. We can't act like it's not happening. So, uh, you know, we just, we just got to move, move on. We got to get ready for practice here in about 45 minutes and get ready to go play the number five team in the country on the road. You mentioned that a couple years ago when another announcement kind of like this happened. You guys had to go play Duke right after that. I mean, can you take anything from that, how you responded to that to tomorrow night? Is that who we played to play? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's... What happened today doesn't change the, the magnitude of the challenge we have of trying to win them all. I mean, we're going into one of the toughest places in the country to play against the number five team in the country. So none of that changes. It's just, you know, I hope our guys can just focus on what we have to do. And I think they will. I mean, it's unfortunately, this isn't the first piece of adversity they've had to deal with this year. So they're, they're getting kind of acclimated to it. But, um, you know, it's basketball is where they just want to get away and focus. And I hope today in practice that's the same way. What can you do to minimize the distraction behind Well, that's why I said, you know, we had planned to go straight from Durham to Blacksburg and not come back about a week and a half ago. So it's not like we just decided to do this. But that might be a good thing. You know, timing is everything sometimes. And maybe that's a good thing because we just, we're all together. Um, you know, obviously they'll t still take care of their academic needs. Uh, you know, our academic guy, Kamari, will be going with us. And 
we'll all have our study hall and all that kind of stuff. But just being together, um, just you know, hopefully try to block, block out the distractions and just focus on basketball. And uh, you know, it's because um, at the end of the day, we, we got to win a couple of these games. There's no question about it. We got to try to win as many as we can. So that, that's got to be our focus. Is there at least one positive maybe that this is out of the way now and it's dealt with and it's done and everybody can kind of move forward? Yeah, I mean, it's good that there's closure, I think, for, for everybody involved. Um, it's not the closure we were hoping for, obviously, but, uh, you know, it's this too in time shall pass, I guess. It'll probably take a long time. Uh, but, you know, I just at, at the end of the day, it's I just want all of our former players that, that were here and to know that it doesn't change what they accomplished. And I think Dr. Postal and Vince both said that today, and it, it, I firmly believe that. I mean, it's, you know, you don't need a banner to tell you that you are a national champion. And I just want all of our former players to know that. And it's, um, you know, it's disappointing that they have to suffer because of the actions of a very select few individuals. But, um, you know, sometimes life just throws your curveballs and you just got to react to them. I think a lot of people probably expect to do this, the appeals committee, <coughs> to reject the, the appeal. Did you, did you, were you surprised that it was rejected? You know, I, I didn't know enough about the facts of the case. I, you know, I wasn't, obviously wasn't privy to a ton of the information. Um, I wasn't at any of the appeal hearings or any of that stuff. So, you know, I, I'm really just kind of an outsider looking in, believe it or not. That probably sounds crazy, but it, it, um, probably one of those situations where you certainly hope for the best, but you have to expect the worst. And, um, you know, it, just another tough day. But with that, with that being said, um, my job as a basketball coach of this team is to get these guys ready to play tomorrow. And, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> If we can come out tomorrow and, and get an upset on the road, maybe that'll help soothe a lot of people up there. You mentioned you, you want to go win as many of these remaining games as possible. Did, did your team, do you feel like your back's against the wall? Yeah, our back's against the wall because we're coming off a loss. Uh, you know, and yesterday was the first time as a team all year we talked about the NCAA tournament. I had, um, I had one of our uh, guys, staff guys put on the board ACC rankings with conference records, overall records. I said, here's where we are. If the, t if the season ended today, would we be in the tournament? Hard to say. Um, what do we need to do specifically to get there? Hard to say. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about these quadrant one wins. I'm not even sure what goes into that. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody is, but it, all I know is, is that we got to try to win as many of these last four games as possible. The good news about these four games is if you win one, two, three, four of them, they're all good wins. Three of them are on the road, one against the top five team, the one at home is against the number one team in the country. So all of these wins are great opportunities to help build your resume. And, you know, I didn't say we have to get to 19, 20, 21, 22 wins. I didn't say that because I don't know the answer to that question. All I said is, you know, we need to focus on a team that's trying to win as many of the games as possible. And we as a team need to try to do this, not only for, for each other, but for Quentin and us. And I'm a big believer in that because this is their last opportunity. Two years ago, they were on a top 10 team and they didn't get a chance to do it. And last year, you know, they got a chance to play in it. As freshmen, they got a chance to play in it. But everybody else has another opportunity down the road to play in the NCAA tournament. And this is the last go round for these guys. So we need to do it for them and we need to do it for ourselves. Speaking of Quentin, you get a couple of big threes the other night, but uh, inside the arc, 0 for 9, it looked like you got to the rim quite a bit, but either couldn't finish or was hoping for a foul. Any, anything he needs to do differently? What do you What do you want to see from him? No, Quinn's playing well. Um, you know, it, without getting into you know, the other night, we just got beat by a team that played better than we did. Um, you know, are they better than us? It's hard to say. They just played better than us that night. And when you dig yourself a 19 pole point hole in the first half, it's tough to overcome. And um, you know. Quentin's been playing well all year. He's going to finish this season really strong. I, I can see it. He has a determination to go out on a high note. And um, you know, it's I don't know how many minutes he played the tonight, but the ball's going to be in his hands. I mean, he's a senior point guard, and we're going to ride with him as far as we can go. Do you prepare just assuming that Bagley will play? Yeah, you have to. I mean, I, I don't. As far as I know, they haven't said one way or another, but you have to assume that he's going to. And even if he doesn't. You know they're still coming. They're coming off a win at Clemson, which is a big time win. I mean that, that's a tough place to play against a very good team. And you know they still have Grayson Allen, who's a four-year All-Conference player. They have Wendell Carter, who's probably a lottery pick. They have you know Gary Trent, Trevon Duvall. Uh, they got a lot of talent. So you know, obviously that is their leading scorer and rebounder. But uh, it's Duke. You know, they're gonna they're gonna be a tough matchup no matter who may or may not be playing for them. Another offensive powerhouse, really, just like team play. Are they? 
different kind of offense? Well, it's not a team where you can say you got to stop the three and you beat them, or you play zone and keep them out of the paint and you beat them. It, because <laughs> they've got, you know, Wendell Carter is, you look at him and you're like, there's no way this kid's a freshman. And he plays like he's a 26 year old NBA veteran. And just because how physically strong he is and how skilled he is, and, you know, they can, re I think they're leading the, the ACC in three point field goal percentage. They can really shoot the ball and, you know, and they're at home. So it's, it's, a, it's going to be a battle tomorrow. I mean, there's no question about it. We have to play probably as close to perfect as you can get to have a chance just because that's how good they are. And, uh, you know, but with that being said, I mean, we don't fear any opponent. We don't go into a game saying we have no chance of win. We haven't done that all year. You know, we played at Virginia. We played at Purdue. We played at Kentucky. I mean, we never had that mentality. So it, that won't change tomorrow night. Dave, what are you guys going to do defensively to slow down Duke? They average 87.4 points per game, which is high for the number one scoring team in the nation. Uh, we changed our whole game plan. We're going to play like Virginia. We're going to hold the ball in offense and take a bunch of shot clock stuff. So, no, um, you know, it's, it, they're obviously a great transition team, especially at home. Uh, they, they run, can, can score at the rim, can shoot threes, can do a lot of different things. Uh, you know, you just you got to take good shots against them. You know, really actually, you say you got to take great shots against them. You got to, you know, can't come down and, and kind of fall into the trap that we fell into a little bit the other night at times, where you're coming down trying to just match them basket for basket. You got to. You got to make them work a little bit on defense. You got to, you got to really hone in defensively on what you need to do, and um, you know you just got to, you got to try to be the better defensive team. Because if you don't, if you don't defend and rebound on the road, it's going to be very tough to win. You, you mentioned that you wished that the NCAA would have waited another month for this. Did you express that to the players, and, and what reaction did you kind of sense from the, the from this coming at this point in the season? You know, it, it literally was a five-minute meeting, so it's hard to say, but. With as much as these guys have had to go through, I think they, you know, I don't want to say they become numb to it, but they just, they, they focus on what's in front of them. And, you know, I just told them, I said, try to block out the noise as much as you can. Now this day and age with social, social media and Twitter and all that stuff, it's going to be hard for them to do. But they just want to play basketball. They want to try to win. Um, I thought we had a very good practice yesterday. And hopefully we'll have another good one today. And, um, you know, we just got to focus on what we're going to do. Anything else for David? You focus. One so more. You focus so much since September on keeping it one day at a time, and then you mentioned that you put the NCAA tournament numbers on the board for the first time yesterday. Was that, given the, the mindset that you've carried all season, was that a, a, a sharp break? Was it? Did, did, was there any? Well, I just felt like it was time. I mean, there's two weeks left in the regular season. It's why wouldn't we talk about it? You know, it doesn't do any good to talk about it in, Jan in the middle of January because there's so much left that can happen. But now with four games remaining. I mean, it's, you got to talk about it, and it's. I'm sure they they knew where we were. I mean, they, you know, they're smart kids, but you just got to talk about it. And now you give yourself a goal and say we got to you know do this. And um, but with that being said, we haven't changed our approach. We, we haven't. We're not looking at Virginia Tech yet. I mean, we're focused on Duke, and then tomorrow at 11 p.m. or whenever that game's over. All right, what well, we got to do in Blacksburg. Thank you.